this slide is called organizing thrombus and here we see the tissue covered by uh, the keratinized squamous epithelium or the epidermis uh, with some hair follicles here, here, and here. Some of the hair follicles um, have sebaceous glands here, here, and here. And in the center of the specimen we can see multiple dilated blood vessels and uh, if we have a look at the wall of these blood vessels we can see that the wall is quite thin it is covered by thin endothelial cells and here we have the connective tissue we don't see any internal or external elastic lamina and uh, here we already have some small capillaries in the advent tissue of these blood vessels so it means we are looking at the veins and not arteries and even for the veins, the wall uh, is quite thin, which means that that is probably a result of dilation. So we are looking at the dilated veins underneath uh, the epidermis. The rest of the specimen is composed of connective tissue made out of collagen fibers, a lot of fibroblasts, and uh, also capillaries. Uh, the overall shape is quite polypoid, so we can ask, uh, where are we? Uh, where, is, where is this specimen localized? It is not a mucosa because of keratinization, so this is really an epidermis. You can see polypoid shape, dilated blood vessels, so I think we can make quite a good guess saying that we are looking at the hemorrhoids with dilated hemorrhoidal venous plexus. Um, because we don't see columnar epithelium or columnar epithelium of colonic type we are probably somewhere below dentate line and these veins are uh, from the inferior hemorrhoidal uh, plexus or part of the inferior hemorrhoidal plexus and we can call these hemorrhoids external internal hemorrhoids would be covered with columnar epithelium and th the veins would be part of superior hemorrhoidal plexus and external hemorrhoids are usually quite asymptomatic unless they are associated with thrombosis as in this case and then they are quite painful so so this is external hemorrhoid with thrombosis uh, but let's talk about thrombosis in general for a while so thrombosis is pathologic formation of a intravascular blood clot and it could be either in the artery or as in this case it could be in the vein as for predisposition for thrombus formation, we have a few risk factors, and these risk factors are called uh, Virchow's triad. Uh, Virchow was a famous German pathologist who is known as father of modern pathology. He uh, was a guy who started to use microscope on the regular basis, which was quite a huge revolution in that time, meaning the 19th century. And uh, he also described risk factors for thrombosis, aka Virchow's triad. And that is disruption of blood flow, endothelial cell damage, and hypercoagulable state. Uh, so disruption of the blood flow means stasis of the blood, or usually in the veins. Like for example, immobiliz immobilization, which can lead to DVT or deep vein thrombosis or stasis of the blood because of dilation of hemorrhoidal plexus as in this case or it could be also turbulent blood flow usually seen the, in the arteries uh, for instance in the case of atrial fibrillation or in an aneurysm uh, well, endothelial cell damage that can lead to exposure of subendothelial collagen and underlying tissue factor uh, which starts um, the coagulation cascade and uh, the third risk factor is hypercoagulable state so it means the various inherited or acquired uh, conditions like anti-thrombin 3 deficiency or oral contraceptives and also a bunch of others in this case the dilation of the veins and stasis of the blood led to thrombosis and because these thrombi were there for some time they are already organized so here we can see the red blood cells the red areas and in between are part of um, platelets 
and fibrin. Uh, we don't see the typical lines of Zahn um, because this thrombus is already organized and also lines of Zahn are usually less prominent in the venous thrombosis. Uh, they are very clear in arterial thrombi where the blood flows faster. So we are going to cover the lines of Zahn in a different slide. Uh, so what is organization of the thrombus? Organization means ingrowth of smooth muscle cells and fibroblasts into the thrombus. And uh, we can also see neovascularization. So all of these cells are fibroblasts. Some of them are smooth muscle cells. Let's have a look here if we can find some small capillaries. And here we have some capillaries. So this is basically granulation tissue. Over the time, recanalization can occur. So if the blood vessel is completely occluded, the blood flow can be restored it or restored again. Uh, but it takes some time. Uh, the thrombus can also dislodge, then we can call it embolus. So classically deep vein thrombosis is associated with pulmonary thromb embolism. Atrial fibrillation can cause embolism in the systemic circuit. And also in case of opened foramen ovale, venous embolus can bypass the lungs and enter a systemic circulation and it can cause stroke or renal infarction for instance, but it's quite rare. Um, another possible option is uh, fibrinolysis. So especially in the few first few hours when we use fibrinolytic drugs, as in the case of myocardial infarction, for instance, thrombosis, uh, thrombosis can be completely dissoluted. Um, so let's end it here. So I guess the less time we're going to spend sitting at the computer watching YouTube, the less chance is we're going to get something like this in our own anuses or, or ani, well, let's say buttholes.